What's up everyone? This is Starscream 1988 and today I'm bringing you another toy review as you can see from Mattel's DC Universe. And this is actually the DC Heroes Wave 18 of Apache Chief and Unchuck. <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's get to it. So obviously I already opened this because I couldn't wait because I'm a little kid just like the rest of you guys. So uh, with further ado, um, as you can see, obviously, I'm working with a very limited room here. I lost my laminate portion of my table, and I kind of said that in my last review when I was just doing um, a, a Robotech thing that you'll see, you know, up here too. But anyway, um, I got to get rid of the box. So I actually kind of have to do this off screen. So anyway, so I'm take this off. Yes, that is a door behind you, same door as it's been in every other video. And let's go with figure number one. And figure number one is, let's see if we can do this. Boom. And you got your black Vulcan. And this guy's very dear to my heart. Not because I am a black person. I am actually um, from Puerto Rico, so I'm Spanish. But he was actually my favorite growing up when I was a kid. So um, watching the show when I heard about this, and I actually also have the three pack of the um, Justice League Unlimited. Um, I wish I had him here to show you. So I can do some size comparisons, but they're, they're put away right now. So it'll have to be another day. But anyway, um, so you can kind of read the statistics there yourself. All right. And we'll go up here. And um, a devoted member of the Super Friends, Black Vulcan's courage and character are undeniable. Although he keeps his identity and personal life to himself, he is trusted implicitly by his teammates. Some speculate that he might be a scientist, especially since he has used his powers to spot weld microelectronic circuits, but not even Batman feels the need to investigate him. Ooh, that's a first. That's pretty cool that they added that because obviously that's something that they never had mentioned in the um, in the um, in the show because obviously it was geared for kids and so they wouldn't you know go with so much detail. But as you can see, he came out in the all new Super Friends Hour in September 1977. So that was a long time ago. Um, probably a lot of you that um, subscribe to me that they'll eventually watch this probably weren't even born then um, unfortunately I was <laughs> but um, anyway so there's your black Vulcan um, his powers were obviously electricity um, what else did he do that I can kind of remember top of my head um, yeah it was just electricity he could obviously fly he could create like a current um, so he was he was a really cool guy um, you know it, it, it was a time where Hannibal Bar Hanna Barbera had the rights to the show so because there was way too many white people they decided to put a little bit of color or actually probably should have said that it sounds kind of racist but I, i'm not um they they wanted to put more flavor so they added a latino they added him uh, they added the japanese guy and then they obviously added uh, apache chief so anyway but um yeah i mean yeah we can say you know they they wanted to add color they wanted to make you know put more colors to the rainbow but um same packaging as always you got your Superman there, all the main the main Justice League guys, Green Lantern, Batman, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Wave 18, figure one. That's a symbol, Black Vulcan. Um, he is the left leg of Apache Chief. And you already saw the back. That's the side. So cool. So put him to the side. Number two. Do -do -do -doom. And here is kind of my people. Uh, <laughs> very far away from where I was actually born. Um, different uh, dialect, you know, in a sense. But um, yeah, he's Latino, and this is your El Dorado. And as you can see, he came out in Super Friends 1981. Um, nobody knows his real name. He's a hero. Blah blah blah. We'll go up here. Um, dressed in a costume that evokes the Aztec kings of long ago, El Dorado uses his mystical powers to aid the Super Friends in their worldwide quest for justice. Some speculate he is a descendant of Aztec sorcerers. Um, hence being Mexican, and they actually do say that in the show once. Empowered by their ancient magic, his people's warrior spirit, El Dorado has never revealed the source of his power, but his knowledge of ancient ruins in Mexico suggests he is connection to Aztec civilization. So maybe he was an alien, um, and he just didn't leave when the Aztecs left. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just making that up. But anyway, um, so that's El Dorado. His powers were funky. I mean, this guy could do everything. Um, he could fly, he could teleport, he could go invisible. Um, I'm trying to remember what else he could do. Um, I guess that's basically it. Um, 
yeah, he was just insane. Um, when he would, you know, when he spoke, he obviously had a little accent, um, you know, just so so the kids would know that he was Latino and whatever not, so the, the the Latino kids watching could you know relate or whatever. But um, yeah, so that's El Dorado. Let me turn him around. So there he is, Mr. El Dorado, and he is very very cool looking too. Um, they all look like their characters. He doesn't for for whatever reason he. I mean, he does and he doesn't. It's kind of weird. Um, all the other ones are a lot closer, but um, but anyway. Um, but yeah, that, that, there you go. That's Eldorado. He's obviously Wave 18. Also, figure number two. That's a symbol, the Aztec symbol, I guess. He is the upper torso to um, Apache Chief. And we already saw the back. And so moving on. Cool. Next guy is number three. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we have Toy Man. And Toy Man's been around for a long time. I'm not even going to go too much into Toy Man. But as you can see, Action Comics 64, 1943. None of us that I think are on YouTube watch this anymore. If there's anybody born prior to 43, I apologize. I'm not trying to insult anybody. But 43 was a long, long, long time ago. But anyway, so there you go. That's your Toy Man. Um, Winslow Shot is a maybe i said that wrong I mean, winslow shot shock scott what i don't know um is a shy inventor who, who was tricked into selling his toy company to an arms manufacturer realizing his technology was going into smart bombs scott sent an explosive teddy bear to his new boss this ironic murder marked the birth of the toy man a frequent adversary of superman toy man is a twisted genius who lost touch with reality and lets out to punish anyone he feels deserves it I wish I could remember the guy that actually voiced him in the show, but he was awesome. I remember his voice being very unique. Um, but let's turn him around. And there's your toy man. And um, he looks just like the show. He's very, very, very cool. I'm, I'm really happy that they made this um, wave. Out of all the waves that have come out, um, I was actually looking forward to this one the most. And I heard about this one back in, I think it was May. So, But yeah, he has his little top, his yo-yo. Um, he is wave 18, obviously, figure number three, and he is the right arm of Apache Chief. Cool. So that was that. All right. Number four is Boomerang. And another contemporary character that's, you know, it's, um, it's gone through the test of time. Um, you know, very popular in Flash's role gallery. Um, but, yeah, this is... Um, he came out in 1960, and this is the original one, not the, not his son, obviously. Um, so if you can read that, cool there. Um, Digger Harkness was a poor Australian boy skilled at throwing a boomerang. When he tried to make a living demonstration his skills, he was laughed by it at the audience, laughed by the audience. Resentfulness and desperate, he turned to crime, calling himself Captain Boomerang. He became an arch enemy of the Flash and joined the supervillain groups, the Rogues, and the Suicide Squad. One taste of his razor edge or explosive boomerangs, and no one is laughing anymore. Yeah, you tell him, Mr. Boomerang. <laughs> but um, there's Captain Boomerang. He looks really nice. Um, he's, again, more contemporary, so he has nothing to do with the actual Super Friends, because um, he did not look like, like, look like this. Um, he was kind of like, you know, more corny or whatever. Um, and I'm pretty sure he was in the show. Maybe I'm wrong. If I was wrong, damn, I apologize. I could swear that he was. I know it was done. Oh, you know what? I'm confusing with Captain Cold. So there was no Captain Boomerang's Captain Cold. Um, but yeah, so anyway, here's your um, Captain Boomerang. And there's a whole bunch of boomerangs there. That's a symbol. And he is figure four, and he is the head and lower torso of Apache Chief. Alrighty. That's that. I know I cheated. <laughs> So here we have Toshio Ito, and he is another one of my favorites. Um, you know, I don't know. It's 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 tough to explain because it's been such a long time. But I remember, I remember um, watching the show, and um, I'm trying to remember his trademark or what he would say. Give me a second. I, I know I'll remember it. Um, he said so many different things too, but his main one was, come on, Odie, remember, remember what he used to say. Oh, I'm probably going to say it wrong. Kizono yi no yo, blah, 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 blah. Kozi ni yo ni hayaku. 
I think that was a saying. And that was basically when he would turn on his tornado thing and he would fly. Um, granted superhuman powers by the new gods in the new Ge uh, on New Genesis history, Professor Toshio Ito vowed to use his new powers for good. He patented his crime-fighting persona after the heroes he admired most, the samurai warriors of ancient Japan. Guided by the ancient samurai court of honor, samurai is a fine role model and member of the Super Friends in their global crusade against evil. One thing that I do remember was that, um, you know, he obviously isn't dressed like a samurai, if there is such a thing of a person dressed like a samurai. But um, he's more of a, I guess, some people have said he's like a Bushido. So more of a wandering style in terms of his clothes. Um, but yeah, he could do, um, he could fly, he could kind of make a tornado from the lower portion of his body. Actually, I, I even remember him doing an episode where his whole body was a tornado and all you could see was his head. Um, and as you can see, he has this like lightning um, sword, which I'll eventually I'll take out. Uh, so but yeah, basically that's him. That's, uh, that's your samurai. So he's really cool. Uh, another, another very nice character. He looks just like the cartoon too. It's amazing what these um, engineers can do at Mattel. Um, obviously, figure five, and he has the left arm of Apache Chief. Cool. Alrighty. Last but not least, another person that I really don't know very well, but um, here's your sixth guy, and this is the Bronze Tiger. Why did they pick him? I have no idea, but that's cool. I'm glad. Um, it's something that had never came out before, so it's, it's good that Mattel, um, you know, picked him. But this is Richard Dragon, and he came out, I guess, in Kung Fu Fighter number one back in April, May of 1975. And you can read the rest for yourself. Um, and then here we got um, Ben Turner sought to tame the wildness within himself by mastering martial arts. Brainwashed by the evil League of Assassins, he donned a tiger mask and became the infamous Bronze Tiger. Turner was eventually deprogrammed by Amanda Waller and joined the Suicide Squad, often defying orders and rescuing teammates deemed inexpendable by Waller. He is a noble man working alongside murderers, forever haunted by his past misdeeds. Wow, that sucks. Um, I, I really want to kind of look into more of this character because I'm, I'm very interested now. He seems very, very cool. But um, there he is. He actually comes with a second head. So you can have him like this. Or you can put the head on. And obviously I'll show you that when the time comes. Um, he is the right leg of Apache Chief. And um, there's a symbol. That's really cool looking. Uh, that's basically it. So cool. So we'll pause here in a second. Open these bad boys up and we'll show you Apache Chief. Alrighty. Alright, and we're back. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there's there's your um, your troop of um, Wave 18. And they are very, very, very cool. I'm really happy to have these. Um, I don't have that many waves. I think I only have three or four complete waves and a couple loose here and there and Right now, my Green Lanterns are in the forefront of that collection, and um, they're actually getting pushed back. Uh, these guys are going up front. Maybe not the ones in the back, but these guys here in particular. Um, I'm not going to go through the articulation. It's, you know, same as always. It, that hasn't changed. Um, most of them are the same mold, just, you know, the repaints or whatever. I got to say, um, he's warming up to me. He's really, really cool looking. Um, and for a mad genius, he, you know, sure is pretty ripped. <laughs> I love it how everybody's ripped in the DC Marvel Universe. But um, this is the man to get, to build. Uh, ooh, and they're a little top heavy. Let's just drop them all. Ah, boom. So here's your um, Apache Chief. And um, one cool thing that I like about him is that um, his jacket, whatever you want to call it, can actually be taken off. You can kind of just do this and, uh, you know pose them whatever way you want so he doesn't have to wear the jacket and there's actually one of the only characters that actually had life after the super friends i mean he he was showcased a few times in the um harvey birdman show and there were hilarious skits and um i believe he's even uh <laughs> an adult star <laughs> but um uh, but yeah so he's, he's really really cool um i'm gonna actually put him here next to my man my favorite collecting connector i think i've said that before um, in terms of size, obviously he could turn bigger, but you know he was part. He was also in the Super Friends, so now they can actually go at it. Like, uh, boom, boom, no, boom. Anyway, but um, there you go. There's your um, Apache Chief set with the rest of the Super Friends. Uh, hope you enjoy my review. They actually look like best friends. That's so, so cool. 
<laughs> but anyway, so that's your Apache Chief set. Um, please pick it up if you see them in the store. As always, I got a really good deal from my boss over at Comically Speaking over in Reading, Mass. So, um, yeah, so head out, go to your Toys R Us, Targets, and whatever not, and pick this set up. Take care, guys. Subscribe. Give me some thumbs up, and I'll see you guys later. And Char Char Bear Riches, this was for you, my man. Peace.